Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, we've got a lot going on on the Hill today, so we're going to have members coming and going uh, during this press conference. But we are here today to authoritatively express that President Trump did not commit an insurrection. Uh, and we believe Congress has a unique role in making that declaration. It's not the job of the states, and especially not the job of some bureaucrats in Colorado to make this assessment and interfere with the rights of voters to cast their vote for the candidate of their choice. The very experts who often get on television and talk about securing democracy seem to be the first to want to then remove a candidate from the ballot because they are afraid that he is too popular. We have 63 co-sponsors to the resolution that Ms. Stefanik and I will be filing today to express the sense of Congress that President Trump did not uh, commit an insurrection. I want to express my gratitude to Senator Vance for filing the companion legislation over in the Senate. And now is time for members of the House and Senate to show where they stand on this question. We and the former president welcome and expect many more co-sponsors in the coming days and look forward to a floor vote. And now I'd like to recognize my co-lead on this project, our terrific Republican Conference Chair, Elise Stefanik. Thank you so much, Matt Gates. The American people are smart. They know that the weaponized attacks of radical far-left prosecutors and Joe Biden's Department of Justice against President Donald Trump are nothing more than a targeted political witch hunt used to further their own extreme far-left political agenda and hijack the will of the American people come Election Day. As President Donald Trump continues to dominate in the polls, extreme Democrats will stop at nothing in attempt to prevent President Donald Trump from returning to the White House, and the Democrats are shredding the Constitution in the process. Joe Biden claims that democracy is on the ballot, Yet the American people know that it is Joe Biden and Democrats who are openly attacking democracy. I am honored to stand as an original co-sponsor on Congressman Gates' resolution that President Donald Trump did not engage in insurrectional rebellion against the United States. That is a fact. Rogue far-left Democrat operatives are attempting to use this lie to illegally take President Trump off the ballot. This week, the Supreme Court will begin arguments in Trump v. Anderson to determine if liberal activist judges have the right to erase Donald Trump from the ballot, steal the election, and the American people's right to elect our leaders. For the sake of American democracy, I am proud to fight for President Trump and the tens of millions of American patriots who face political persecution. With that, I am honored to turn it over to Bill Posey, our colleague who is also a co-sponsor of this bill. Bill. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, uh, Congressman Gates, for leading on this. Uh, the same people trying to keep Donald Trump off the ballot are the same ones who supported the fake dossier, uh, the, the biggest fraud in political history, probably. Same ones who claimed Obamacare would let you keep your own doctor, uh, keep your own insurance company, and it's going to cost you less. Same people. Uh, they're the same people that claim the border is secure. Uh, now they claim Donald Trump is a danger to democracy uh, and should not be on the ballot. Just three quick facts. The real threat to democracy is an administration that weaponizes government to target, intimidate, and silence political opponents. The real threat to democracy is the use of lawfare to destroy political adversaries and interfere in elections. The real threat to a democracy is denying American citizens the right to vote for the candidate of their choice. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to a colleague from the great state of Texas, Congressman Babin. Thank you, for Mr. Posey. I want to thank Mr. Gates for having this. <clears throat> really appreciate it. I'm Brian Babin, 36th District of Texas. Here's the reality. If you still refuse to believe that the endless war on Donald J. Trump is fueled by anything other than pure hatred and personal vendettas, we're not ever going to change your mind. The facts obviously don't really matter to you. But the American people and those standing with me here today can see the truth. The radical left is attempting to destroy our electoral process, and folks, we cannot let them succeed for the benefit of our great republic. It is time to push back, to preserve the type of freedom that was won by blood and defended by patriots 
to keep in place the liberties that set the United States apart from all nations on, on the face of this earth and have allowed our nation to become the envy of the world. We cannot bend the knee or turn a blind eye to this blatant attempt to discredit the will of the American people. It is crystal clear that Donald Trump did not incite an insurrection to say otherwise and to block him from any ballot in any state is election interference, pure and simple, period. Let's not call this what it is, or let's do call this what it is, a desperate fourth quarter Hail Mary to remove a political opponent and rival from contention. It's a reckless precedent that sets and risks our entire democratic process, and it must be rejected. I yield back. I would like to introduce my good friend from Arizona, Representative Andy Biggs. Don't, don't get too close. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Gates. I appreciate you introducing this important piece of legislation to try to readjust the constitutional republic that we are. What, what we have seen is mass hysteria caused by you, the reckless leftist media. That's what we've seen. Let's, let's consider this. What did Pulitzer Prize winning reporter Matthew Rosenberg say? He said the left's overreaction, the left's reaction to it in some places was over the top. They were making it this organized thing that it wasn't. That's what Mr. Rosenberg said. What did a court say when you had an individual, a guy named Matthew Martin? He's tried. He just happened to be here, peacefully wandering around. But he was charged with Entering a restricted building, disorderly conduct, violent entry, and parading in the Capitol building. Petty offenses. But what we found out is he was waved into the Capitol. And what did a Capitol police officer say? Well, the, the crowd was large. We waved him in. That was the testimony given by a police officer. That doesn't sound like an insurrection. Neither, does, neither do these comments by President Trump. Stay peaceful. Please support a Capitol police and law enforcement. They're truly on the side of our country. Stay peaceful. 30 minutes later, I'm asking for everyone at the U.S. Capitol to remain peaceful. No violence. Remember, we are the party of law and order. Respect the law and our great men and women in blue. Thank you. That doesn't sound like an insurrection. How about this? Exclusive. The FBI finds scant evidence that U.S. Capitol attack was coordinated. FBI investigators did find that some cells of protesters, including followers uh, of two groups, Oath Keepers and Proud Boys, had aimed to break into the Capitol, but they found no evidence that the groups had any serious plans about what to do if they made it inside the Capitol. That doesn't sound like an insurrection. The, further, the FBI found no evidence that President Trump or people directly around him were involved in organizing violence, accord, according to law enforcement personnel. No charges filed for insurrection or treason. How about when, when uh, Director Ray came in and testified before judiciary? He said there were three groups on the Capitol that day. Largely and by far the majority were peaceful. Second group were people that, for whatever reason, they, they entered the Capitol, but they were peaceful, but they con con uh, committed a trespass. And then you had a small group that was violent. We call that a riot. Well, but that's not how it happened. The Democrats, they insisted that it was an insurrection, but the exchange between Eric Swalwell trying to get this director to say that it was an insurrection at the hearing in June of 2021, where Director Ray said, well, Congressman, I understand why you describe it that way, but as FBI director, that term has legal meaning. It was not an insurrection, but the crazos on the left, supported by the, their accomplices in the media, continue to try to harass and have President Trump removed from ballots using this false narrative. And it is a false narrative. And that's why I'm here. I appreciate Representative Gates and Representative Stefanik. And I will be supporting this bill. And I will just tell you one other thing. 
when I when I think of uh, uh, of insurrection, well, I'm I'm not even going to go there. I can just tell you this. I wish you'd all take a look at your your leftist colleagues in the in the Congress who've advocated violence over time. Then tell me what insurrection is. I yield now to my friend from Tennessee, Mr. Burchett. Thank you. I'm used to going at the end. Usually the custodian's up here moving the mic around and saying, and, and say, were you going to say something? I go, no, I was just here to clean up. I want to thank my dear friend Matt Gates for including me in this. Um, you know, it's a sad day when free speech is weaponized, especially against a political opponent. It's hard to engage in an insurrection when you weren't even there. President Trump told protesters to protest peacefully. He said, please support our Capitol Police and law enforcement. They are truly on the side of our country. Stay peaceful. Now, Dad Gummett, I don't know what, what he can say more than that. Does this sound like someone engaging in insurrection? Hell no. What happened at our Capitol was not good, but President Trump did not make these people do this, and he sure wasn't engaged in it himself. You know, there's something, used to be something in this country uh, before everybody got a trophy, and it was called um, personal responsibility. Personal responsibility. President Trump is a man who loves our country, and especially our law enforcement. If you've ever been with him, it drives his Secret Service crazy every time he sees a group of police officers because he always stops to speak to them. And lots of people have valid concerns about the security of our elections, and Trump made his concerns known. It's not illegal in this country, at least it used to not be, to have a First Amendment. It's not illegal for Trump, and it's not illegal for your everyday Americans. This is about the left wanting to remove him. They will do anything to get it done. You're allowed to have an opinion of President Trump, but he did not engage in an insurrection. And on a personal note, you know, I was the last person, the very last House member to leave the House floor. I, I, called, I, I called the investigators twice because someone was actually doing a, um, um, a blog or something in the, in the tunnel with their computer on to other people. I explained this to them. I called them twice. They never called me back. I went on my own volition and someone else who is no longer a member of Congress, and we reviewed those tapes, and I pointed out who it was, and it turned out it was a member of the media. Yet, I never could get anyone to return my calls on the investigation and my repeated attempts, and I was sure as hell wasn't invited back to the January 6th commission, which was a joke. So thank you all very much, and I yield to my good buddy from Tennessee, the gentleman farmer, John Rose. Thank you, Tim. Um, we shouldn't have to be here today, but we are because of illegal and illegitimate attempts by unhinged left-wing courts and liberal elected officials that have put their own political endeavors above the U.S. Constitution. The fact is, President Trump had every right to peacefully contest the results of the 2020 election. Hillary Clinton did it. So did many of my Democratic colleagues in 2000, 2004, and 2016. The rules are clear and simple. They're written in Article 2, Section 1 of the Constitution and in the Electoral Count Act of 1887. It's how our process works. As a former practicing attorney, I can say there isn't a single shred of evidence that points in the direction that President Trump participated in an insurrection. The protesters who were present in the Capitol building did so of their own volition. They were not encouraged and they were not led by the president to take any such actions other than to peacefully protest. The bottom line is that we need to send a message to the country and those who are doing everything they can to remove pro former President Donald Trump from the ballot. Your efforts will not stand. Democracy and the rule of law are President Trump's are on President Trump's side. In America, we let the people decide at the ballot box who their leaders are going to be. I stand here in support of Mr. Gates's resolution, which expresses the sense of the House that President Trump did not engage in insurrection or rebellion against the United States. This is a no-brainer, and I and I want to thank all of my colleagues standing here today and those who are joining us in support of Mr. Gates's resolution and Ms. Stefanik as well. Thank you very much. And it is my great pleasure to introduce Mr. Van Jeff Andrew. Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to be with you. First of all, let me thank 
Ms. Stefanik and Mr. Gates for their work. Uh, I appreciate them. It is making a difference. So why are we here today? You know, I have prepared notes here, and I was going to read a speech. I'm not going to bother. Frankly, it's too long, and there's too many of us. <laughs> but let me tell you the real deal. This is about politics, unfortunately. It's about left-wing politics. It's a tale of two presidents, a failed president, Joe Biden, failed on the borders, failed on the economy, failed on foreign policy, failed on what's going on in our cities and the decay, failed in every parameter and every barometer that you could use. He's a failed president. And then we had a successful president, President Trump. Look where we were four years ago, a strong economy, sealed borders, cities thriving and doing well in every measure you can use. But the left can't let that happen. And I'm not even going to say Democrats, because there are still some good Democrats out there, moderate ones, less and less, unfortunately. But the left wants you to look at the shiny object over here, what happened in January 6th. Because if you're not looking at that, you're looking at what's really happening. And when you look what really is happening, you're worried if you're an American because you see that everything is going in the wrong direction. Look at the polls. Even when it is polls done by the New York Times or any other group, they will tell you that things aren't going well for this president. And then we speak about democracy. Who wanted to stop the democratic process? So first of all, you've heard from all, all my colleagues. It's absolutely true. President Trump made it clear over and over again. He respects police and law enforcement that he wanted it to be a peaceful process. He used those words, but somehow those words aren't in on the stories that are about January 6th. But what the real deal here is, they say, well, other folks that hate President Trump or don't like Republicans will say, they want to stop. The Republicans want to stop. President Trump wants to stop democracy in action. Who's stopping the primaries in their own primary election and not participating in them? You know their name? It's Joe Biden. Who's pushing people out of the party? Who's pushing them out? Joe Biden. Ask RFK what he thinks, what he thinks about the process, what he thinks about democracy. Ask the two other people. Or ask Dean Phillips what he thinks. He wants to engage in a debate. They won't debate him. They won't debate him. And Dean Phillips is a, a, a liberal Democrat, but he just wants democracy to take place. Ladies and gentlemen, all I ask you to think about is what this is really about. It boils down to this. Trump didn't want violence. He doesn't want any of that. He wanted to let people know what the real deal is. Trump, successful. Biden, unsuccessful. So what do we got to look at? Man, they just want to keep talking about the past, and they want to talk about January 6th. It's a nothing burger. It's a non-starter compared to what we need to talk about, which is the future of this republic. I'd like to ask my good friend, Lauren Boebert, next. Congresswoman. Thanks. I'll keep my remarks brief today. I want to uh, thank my, my dear friend, Matt Gates for introducing this resolution and Chairman, uh, Chairwoman Stefanik for uh, co-sponsoring this and leading this. Um, this is a witch hunt against President Trump. Uh, it's absolutely unprecedented. Uh, and the woke mob, the fake news, and the leftist uh, government officials who are engaging in this extortion should be downright ashamed of themselves. All of the bogus um, cases against President Trump are plain and simple election interference. It's an act of fear. They're afraid of President Trump, and they should be, because they understand that President Trump, once he is back in the White House, will undo all of the damage that the left has caused the American people over the past four years. He will bring back his beautiful policies that make our country the greatest country to live in. They tried to rig the 2020 election by sending out hundreds of thousands of ballots illegally. They colluded with the government and big tech to censor the Hunter Biden laptop story. We know that Democrats would have changed their votes had they been informed. 
about Hunter Biden's laptop. We know that they would have not voted for Joe Biden. The left is afraid, and now they are trying again to rig another election by interfering in this political witch hunt, by persecuting their political opponents. The reality is the left knows they cannot win at the ballot box. They cannot beat President Trump in an actual free and fair election. So they are trying to rig the game in the courts. The American people see through this. They see that this is election interference. And not only will President Trump win at the Supreme Court after my home state of Colorado removed President Trump from a primary ballot, which is absolutely absurd and completely un-American, completely unconstitutional. But he will win at the Supreme Court. He will win in November. And the American people will win. We want a president, again, who cares for us, who cares for our country. Mr. President, today I stand with you. Colorado stands with you. My colleagues here in Washington, D.C. stand with you. And America cannot wait for your return. Thank you, Mr. President, for everything that you have done for our country. Mr. Gates, thank you for this resolution. And I will turn it over to the chairman of the House Freedom Caucus, Bob Good. Thank you, Congressman Boebert. Thank you for everybody for being here today. You know, my good friend, Congressman Gates, who demonstrates undying, unquestioned love of country and courage like is rarely seen in this House of Representatives with the things that he does. Uh, I thank him for bringing this resolution forward that explicitly states what we already know, that President Trump did not incite an insurrection against the government on January 6, 2021. You know, the Democrats they only have two things these last three years. All they've had is COVID forever, J6 forever. But President Trump simply ignored, excuse me, encouraged, President Trump simply encouraged 74 million Americans to come to Washington to peacefully protest, petition their government, and express their grievances. I'm thankful again to uh, my colleague, Mr. Gates, for, for initiating and introducing this, this resolution, clarifying this very fact. President Trump is right when he says it over and over. He is the one standing between a weaponized Biden administration and the American people. And they're not just after him, they are after all of us. President Biden has weaponed his Department of Injustice unlike anything we have ever seen before, simply to target his political rival and his supporters. I mean, what more effective way to rig an election than to keep your opponent from being able to be on the ballot? His Department of Injustice has targeted, however, conservatives all over the country, whether it's pro-life protesters in Pennsylvania, parents at school board meetings all over the country, Catholics practicing their faith, not just in Richmond, we've learned, not just from one field office, which is egregious enough, but all across the FBI, and even those targeting those who purchase ammunition or, God forbid, purchase religious materials targeted by this weaponized Department of Injustice. Of all the crises and all the existential threats to the country that this president and his administration have created, perhaps the most dangerous of all is the lack, the loss of faith and trust in our federal law enforcement, in our system of justice. Perhaps that may be the most dangerous of all. So again, I thank all of my colleagues for assembling here today. I thank you for Congressman Gates for initiating this. And I yield now to my good friend, Diana Harshberger from Tennessee. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Matt, and thank you, Elise, for the resolution. You know, for nearly a decade, President Trump's been the victim of political persecution with no basis in reality. You know, it starts with the Russian hoax, then it goes to the baseless impeachments in the House, and then it ends with President Trump being accused of engaging in an insurrection. You know, extreme Democrats are going to use every tool at their disposal to either implicate or entrap President Trump in a made-up fake scandal. And in case you forgot, we had and we watched cities burn across this country in the name of peaceful protest. Yet, President Trump and his supporters were vilified for doing nothing more than exercising their First Amendment rights. 
You know, the American people know there's a two-tiered justice system in this country, but I would factually, I will tell you, there's a triple threat. We have weaponization of the Department of Justice under the Biden administration. And they absolutely work in collaboration with Democratic secretaries of states. And then they work with far left judicial activist mm -hmm. judges. And together they have launched a coordinated attack on our elections to silence the voice of millions of Americans. But their calculated distortion of the truth is aimed to deny Biden's chief political opposition an appearance on a 2024 ballot and interfere with the presidential election. You know, this is not partisan politics, folks. It's aimed. This country is divided, and the people know it. And you know why? Because they get half-truths or no truth at all. And I've watched the faces of some of you reporters, and you smirk. But that's exactly what's happened. They get half-truths or no truths at all. Put it all out there. Let the American people make their own judgment. And the last thing I'm going to say is this. We have to stand strong against this evil. There's a verse of scripture, Ephesians 6, 12, and it says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of this dark world. And we wrestle against spiritual wickedness, spiritual wickedness in high places. So my message to the American people is simple. Armor up and get ready for the spiritual battle ahead because it's going to be a battle. Mm -hmm. And with that, Ms. Green, yeah, Ms. Green, well, Green. come on up, Marjorie. It's your turn. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Not one single person has been charged with insurrection. Not one single person <laughs> has been convicted with insurrection. Not one. In every single court of our land, no one's been charged and convicted with insurrection, yet Democrats and dishonest people in the media every single day accuse President Trump of waging an insurrection and accuse many of us of waging an insurrection, and you're doing nothing but lying and selling the lies of the Democrats all for campaigns and elections. Shame on every single person that has done that. Shame on you. You need to tell the truth. You have the freedom of press, one of the greatest rights in this entire world. And anyone that puts the word insurrectionist, calls President Trump an insurrectionist, and calls any of us an insurrectionist is a liar, and you do not deserve the power that you possess. Shame on you. Shame on you. Let me give you guys a little history lesson, okay? When President Trump was inaugurated, Antifa and leftist rioters nearly burned down Washington, D.C. Did you call it an insurrection? No. BLM raised millions of dollars on the Act Blue Democrat fundraising website and then proceeded to cause $2 billion in damages across American cities and communities all in 2020, every day. Not one day for three hours every damn day. Did you call it an insurrection? They attacked police officers, federal courthouses, tore down statues, burned 93 police vehicles. Did you in the media call it an insurrection? No, you did not. You called it mostly peaceful. And you lied to the American people and the American people don't trust you anymore because of that. And then the American people who pay for elections with their tax dollars, actually own the elections and have, have the right, the right to care about their elections, election integrity, and the results of their elections. When they came to Washington and protested, all of you called it an insurrection. And then when Joe Biden was inaugurated and this entire Capitol complex was surrounded with 30,000 National Guard troops, none of you stood there and called that an insurrection. Oh, no. You all stayed silent. And while Matthew Graves, the U.S. Attorney at the Department of Justice, is arresting people every single day, throwing them in jail, held them for 22 hours in solitary confinement, unconvicted, all of you stay silent. No one attacks them for that. Apparently, you think it's deserved. Shame on you. 
And I want you to know the American people are paying attention. They're not stupid just because you tell them in your articles and in your headlines and on your network networks that Trump is an insurrectionist or any of us are insurrectionists. No. As a matter of fact, you're hurting your own careers and you're hurting your industry for lying to them. So I would, I would like to thank you, Matt, very much. And I would like to thank Elise Stefanik for introducing this resolution. And I cannot believe we even have to do this because Democrats and, and liars in the media accuse President Trump of being an insurrectionist when in fact he is not. He said, go in peace, go in peace. God bless President Trump. God bless him for saying we should care about our elections. And I want you to know, because of that, Americans do care about our elections. And we have every single right to care. Thank you very much. I urge my colleagues to vote for this resolution. And with that, uh, I'd like to turn it over to Ronnie Jackson from Texas. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh Thanks once again, Matt. I appreciate you doing this as well um, for introducing this. This is something that's really important. Unfortunately, it's been a, it's been a sad few years in the Biden administration, and uh, you know we've seen lots of things happen. We've seen our southern border in absolute disaster, uh, the security of our border, and everything that it's brought with it—the crime and the drugs. Uh, we've seen our reputation overseas uh, completely devastated. We've seen our economy uh, take a huge hit because of uh, some of the Biden policies that have been put, that have been put in place. But I think the biggest danger is the weaponization of government that's taken place in an effort to prevent President Trump from ever being president again. And it started a long time ago, but unfortunately it's happened right here in this very body as well. This, this body has participated in the weaponization of government directed specifically at that, at keeping President Trump from ever being reelected and from becoming president again. And we saw that during the uh, January 6th committee, uh, which is a complete disgrace, uh, led by Democrats such as uh, Liz Cheney and uh, Adam Schiff. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and others, we, we, we saw what happened there. That We found out since then that this committee was put in place for no other reason other than to tear President Trump down. We've seen now they've been discredited. We found out that some of the information that they had, some of the evidence that they collected, which most likely was evidence that, that, uh, that uh, undermined their case against President Trump, has been destroyed. Uh, and this, unfortunately, is just the very beginning of a long, uh, a long period of time where uh, the Democrats have tried every single thing possible, every tool at their disposal, to, to go after President Trump. They're very single-minded on this. This is all they care about is do not let President Trump be on the ballot. Do not let him uh, be eligible to run. And for God's sake, do not let him become president again or put him back in the White House. I can tell you that the American people have weighed in on this. He has overwhelming support in this country right now. He will be elected again. Yes. He was our 45th president, the best president we've ever had in this country, and he will be our 47th president again. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say that this, uh, this, this, this whole process should not be necessary. What's happening in this country right now is an absolute disgrace. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank Matt once again for your courage to bring this forward and to, and, and to reiterate to the American people that this is, uh, this is not the way we operate here in this country. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Matt Rosendale. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. Uh, it's nice to see the press actually participate in, in some truth that's being spread around the Capitol because uh, many times we've got a lot of rhetoric and, and misinformation that gets spread. I really appreciate Matt Gates and Lee Stefanik introducing this legislation so that we can get on the record the, uh, the people that support President Tr Trump, that understand and, and are willing to s declare that there was not an insurrection that took place on January 6th. I was here. Many of my colleagues were here. And so we do witness and know that it was not an insurrection. President Trump did not engage in, in an insurrection on January 6th, as shown by multiple courts which have already dismissed these bogus charges. This is nothing more than election interference. It is on full display. And, and we would appreciate if the media would just start coming forward and, and admitting to that. Uh, it should be just as easy for Congress to pass this resolution as it is for the courts to dismiss those cases. Or, as I like to say, if we were trying to pass a resolution to spend another several billion dollars to help, say, oh, Ukraine, maybe then we could get everybody in Congress lined up to support the resolution because those seem to go through pretty fast. So let's get everybody on this now so that we can put out in the, public's, in the public sphere that 
Congress does recognize that there was not an insurrection that took place on January 6th, just as the courts have already put in the record. Whether the charges were brought in Michigan or Minnesota, they've been dismissed. I look forward to the Supreme Court doing the exact same thing and vindicating our president so we can be on with this removal of him from different ballots. I've stood with President Trump since the beginning, including when I voted against the electors on January the 6th, after numerous credible allegations of election fraud were shared with us, after numerous allegations of state officials changing the election process without legislative approval. Those are the facts, folks. Those are the facts. And the Electors Act gave us the ability, gave us the, 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 the directive to refuse to accept those electors if we didn't feel that they were properly awarded. And so myself, and I would say everyone here that's not a freshman, voted against the electors from Arizona. That's correct. And we voted against the electors from Pennsylvania. That's correct, because that information and those facts were there. And the facts, again, will come clear. And as I always say, the truth isn't always pretty, but it is always the truth. The truth will prevail. It will be shown that President Trump did not cause this insurrection. And then once again, we can eliminate this election interference that has been conducted upon him for so long. I appreciate your time, and I would like to introduce my good friend from Missouri, Representative Eric Burleson. I think we've heard, I want to say, first say thank you to um, Representative Gates and um, Elise Stefanik for leading this resolution. Look, this town created, started the witch hunt the moment that President Trump was elected. And it began through every part of this deep state in this town and through you, the media. Mm -hmm. from, the, from the Russian collusion hoax to the, then there was the phone call, which was ironically what the, the very thing that an administration ought to be looking at and what we're looking at today, which is corruption by the previous administration in Ukraine. It's sad that we have to do the job that you're supposed to be doing in the press. And that's why the American people are frustrated. And as you can imagine, that's why many of them came to their nation's capital in frustration, not just at what they saw happening in the election process, but because they were frustrated with you, the media, who they felt like they couldn't trust anymore. And so they're in the Capitol. And you know what's ironic? I didn't, not one of them was armed. You know, you know, I come from Missouri where a lot of people are armed. Not one of the people up here was armed. And I don't know how you're going to take over the Capitol if you're not armed. So first and foremost, it's ridiculous to say that someone with face paint and bison horns is here to take over the Capitol. Okay? In Missouri, when I was in the Missouri Capitol, we had protesters come in all the time. We would call what happened on that day a Wednesday in the Missouri Capitol. Okay? We welcome free speech. We welcome people telling us how we, what we should be doing, how to vote, letting people express their frustration peacefully through their elective process and their First Amendment rights. Because as our founders have said, if they can't do it through that process, they will do it through a more violent process. And it's your job in the press to uphold those First Amendment rights. And it's your job to make sure that people's rights aren't being taken away and ultimately that uh, people know and have trust in you and this government. Um, at the end of the day, you can't, you can't say that Trump uh, was involved in insurrection when there was no insurrection. At, that's at the end of the day. And it's ridiculous that this place continues to clutch pearls towards, a, towards an individual who represents the interests of most people in this country, most hardworking, blue-collar Americans in this country that just love their country. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Um, and, oh, my good buddy from Georgia, Representative Mike Collins. Thank you. You know, this is my, uh, my first term in Congress, so I've spent the last 30 years in the private sector in the trucking industry. I know what it felt like during those Obama years to see a far 
left swing and overreach by this federal government. And I was also on that other side of the ledger and saw what it felt like when the Trump administration came in and put America first, put Americans first, put money back in their pocket, and gave them their power back. You see, Hillary Clinton was supposed to complete the mission of Obama, but Trump stood in the way and gave that power back to the people. That's 100% why when Trump even, when he came down the escalator to announce that he was going to run, that they were worried and scared about that. They knew what could happen if he won. That's why they've spent years trying to destroy him personally, destroy his business, even destroy his family. The only thing that this guy did was disagree with the results of the election in 2020. He didn't call for violence. But you see, the left-wing media and the left-wing in this country, they're out to not just make an example out of Trump. They want to make sure that anybody else that steps up, that has that America first agenda, that never get tired of winning. Oh, man, you're going to think about running for this position. Look at what we did to Trump. Look at what we did to his family. Look at what we did to regular Americans that just came up here to peacefully protest and express their opinion about an election. Because you see, the only thing the Democrats have right now and what this president has is an America last. <laughs> We're not feared in the world. And our enemies don't fear us. Our economy's in the shambles. Inflation's sky high. So what have we got to do now? We've got to keep Trump off that ballot. That's what we got to do. By any means necessary. But this resolution right here, this is where the House of Representatives, we're taking a stand. And we're going to declare what is self-evident. And that is President Trump did not engage in insurrection or rebellion on January 6th. And by God, I'm proud to stand here with 60 of my colleagues and to do just that. And with that, I would like to yield some time to a good buddy of mine out of Arizona, Representative Eli Crane. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming. It's an honor to be here. Thank you, Matt and Ms. Stefanik for leading on this. You know what I love about this, watching uh, where President Trump is at in the polls? <laughs> I love it because it shows the American people don't trust you guys. And they shouldn't, because you guys are full of it and everybody knows it. There's a few honest journalists in this town, but there are very few and far between. You know how I know it wasn't an insurrection? Because he hasn't been charged with insurrection. And we can all see by the lawfare how he's facing up over 700 years in jail right now, how they've tried to destroy this man, destroy his businesses, that if they felt they had an inkling of a chance of convicting President Trump of jaywalking or insurrection, they would absolutely charge him. You know how else I know it's not an insurrection? Because this is the first insurrection in the history of the world where the people that were a part of it were unarmed. Pretty hard to do if you walk around and see how many individuals are carrying firearms. All right. Last thing I want to say about how I know it's not an insurrection is because I actually listened to the words of the president. If you're trying to stoke an insurrection, you don't tell the people listening, hey, I want you to go over there peacefully and patriotically. All right. This is not an insurrection. What it is, is a party that's scared to death of this man because he's America first and he's shown time and time again he's willing to bust up the swamp and he continues to beat you like a drum. That's what this is really about. And for all you journalists out there, you know, that are pretty cowardly, some in this room right now, you don't have the, you don't have the balls to write the truth. And even if you did, your publishers wouldn't publish it because you're a part of a propaganda outlet, probably one of the biggest in the history of the world. If you had any courage, I want, I want some, you to ask some questions about that day, January 6th, that we keep talking about. Why has the pipe bomber not been caught yet? Huh? Why has the pipe bomber not been caught? The one individual that could have committed multiple mass, mass casualties has not been caught yet. Go look at, go, go follow some of uh, BD's reporting over at Revolver News. He's got some uh, evidence for you guys. What's going on up here with January 6th is there's a pretty big cover up actually going on up here in Capitol Hill about some of the involvement of our government 
and uh, it's quite unsavory. And I want to acknowledge uh, Rep. Massey's work on this lately and others who have been trying to get to the bottom of it. But here's some other, here's some other questions for you journalists to ask. Why did it take so long for Ray Epps to be charged? Hmm? Go, go watch videos of Ray Epps on that day and how he was stoking the entire thing and how long it took him to be charged. And yet there were so many people that were brought, in, brought into the D.C. D jail and they're still there to this day. So if you guys want to ask some questions, those are some questions. But the bottom line is we all know President Trump didn't, did not commit insurrection and he's probably going to be the president of the United States once again. And so I'm happy to be a part of this resolution. I'm happy to support the president. And I'm happy to call out all you little cowardly liars in the press. Thank you. Um, I want to now um, welcome my friend Harriet Hageman to come up. Is she here? All right. Going down the list. Oh, you thought I was bad. Wait till this one gets up here. I want to welcome Miss Anna Paulina Luna. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Um, to follow up on what Representative Crane had stated, you know, we have the ability and at our disposal tools to find terrorists in caves in the Middle East that you can't find someone who planted a pipe bomb. That's pretty egregious, but we have evidence that the government co really helped to cover up what was happening. And I will just point all of you to what happened at Oversight, where we actually questioned Twitter, Twitter 1.0. We saw that under the Department of Homeland Security, SISA was actually working to not only suppress information, to include the president's statement to remain peaceful on January 6th. Remember how he said that? Yet it was nowhere on social media. It's because these outlets, whether it was Google, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, they're all working to suppress that information. But I wonder why. I wonder why they would want to do that. And it's because this president is truly a man that is outside of the D.C. control. And frankly, that's why every single person, I'm pretty sure, up here has endorsed him for re-election. And he's going to win in November. But I want to ask you all questions on whether or not you think that we should be charging someone like uh, Hillary Clinton with insurrection, someone like Stacey Abrams with insurrection, because they all claim that they won elections. We know that Hillary Clinton was full of it. We know that because we saw what come out. In fact, you guys know that I all censored Adam Schiff over it. There was no evidence of Russia collusion. So I want to close with saying this. What we've seen happen over the last couple of years has not only been depressing as a member of Congress to witness how much people up here have actually used that lie, used that narrative, not just to smear President Trump, but to tear apart this country. But I do applaud what, Pres uh, what Representative Gates has done. And what I will say is that those sociopaths that continue to push this lie, once we have this on the floor, if you continue to push this, you guys are all going to be guilty of breaching House privileges, okay? Because we're saying that it didn't happen. We have evidence to back it up. So just think on that for a little bit. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce my good friend, Corey Mills, and fellow colleague from Florida. Thank you so much. I want to point out a couple of obvious statements. These have been out there from the very beginning. One is right here. You want to talk about inciting violence, inciting an insurrection. You want to talk about the ideas of promoting violence. Well, right here, you've got Kamala Harris, who is actually trying to raise funds for the very people who are setting fire to our cities in 2020. Why don't we go look at Minneapolis? Why don't we go look at Seattle, New York, Baltimore? Why don't we look at what CHOP was doing, what was being encouraged? Why don't we look at Maxwell Waters, who said we need to be more confrontational, or Nancy Pelosi, the former speaker, who said, I'm surprised there's not more people out in the streets rioting. Now, let's look at what President Trump said, however. He said, these things and events that happen when a sacred landslide election victory is so un unceremoniously and viciously stripped away from great patriots who have been badly and unfairly treated for so long, go home with love and in peace, remember this day forever. Well, you're right. The media did remember this day forever, and so did the left, who continued to try and vilify it as something that it is not. But let me be clear. President Trump did not incite violence. This was not an insurrection. If this was an insurrection, then what about all the pro-Hamas members who sit in our Capitol and disrupt legislation, which just happened last week? Was that an insurrection? It was an unarmed group who was disrupting federal legislative process. That's what everyone in the media and all the left continues to try and claim. But the bottom line is, is that it was never about policing and it was all about politics. This is election interference. This is trying to remove someone that they know will be the president of the United States, someone who was the 45th 
46th and will be the 47th president of the United States. This is about ensuring that they can try and remove him from the ballot by attacking his family, by attacking his businesses, by claiming that there was a false narrative set up for fraud regarding the actual valuation of his property, Mar-a-Lago, which 20 years ago was valued higher than what they're trying to claim it is today. This is about lawfare, whether it be Fannie Willis and the DA's office, whether it be the AGs, whether it be the Department of Injustice. The bottom line is that this was never about trying to prosecute the president and all about trying to have him removed for election interference. Let me be clear. The United States House of Representatives stand strongly and firmly behind the president. We will not allow the lies out of the media and the left to continue on. And I am honored to stand here and support my good friend and colleague, another Florida man, Representative Matt Gates, and our chairwoman, Elise Stefanik, to make sure that we once and for all put it to bed that President Trump did not incite violence. He did not lead an insurrectionist. What he did was he stood for the American people, and I'll stand for him. With that, I'll go ahead and turn this over to my good friend from Texas, Mr. Keith Sell. Uh, thank you, Corey. Uh, you've heard here the hypocrisy, the two-tiered justice system. I want to share a story with you. Four women from my district traveled on January the 6th to the National Mall. They were nowhere near the Capitol. They saw uh, the, uh, the smoke, but uh, didn't even know what was going on. They went home. Three of them actually put on social media pictures in their account. One did not. Guess which three were visited by the FBI? Yeah, you got it. Look, we've heard a lot about Section 3 of the 14th Amendment as they've attacked President Trump. What you're not looking at is Section 5 of the 14th Amendment that specifically in the Constitution gives the Congress the ability to act on this. Look at Section 5. And I will tell you, as we go through this, what we, we want a nation of the people, by the people, and for the people, rather than a nation of media, by media, and a trial uh, of, for, and for the media. This shall not stand. I am proud to stand here with uh, both my friends, uh, Representative Gates and Stefanik. And with that, I introduce Dan Webster. Well, I can't say much more than has been said. However, there was an event that I attended. There was no one here on this stage, no one in Congress, no staff, no, no one except myself. Most of the rest are dead. That was in 2000. There was a, another ballot question. It was in Florida. And it was Bush versus Palm Beach County Canvassing Board. And that, in that decision, uh, not a, six, a five to four decision, it was pure curum. It was the court. The court decided that what was done was wrong. They told the Supreme Court of Florida they were wrong. They told them to modify their decision based on what this, deci this decision was. And because of that, The things that a lot of the things that were done that people have criticized for, especially the Senate and House and voting and and objecting to the results, that was allowed. Matter of fact, it was talked about in that case. The reason nobody brought that up is because nobody knew about it. So the only one that did uh, was Thomas, Justice Thomas, and Justice. Uh, let's see, one other, one other. I guess the one that came in with Bush, because he wouldn't have been there had that, that not gone that way. So all I can tell you is that case said it was if anything was done in the election, done after the fact, done without the permission of the state legislature, was invalid. And that was their ruling. And it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't just a five to four decision. It was pure curum. Ginsburg was there, and so was Scalia. And they both agreed because it was the right thing. And so unfortunately, uh, I, I tried to call some. I called the president and, and, and speaker of the House of Pennsylvania and, 
in uh, Minnesota and uh, Wisconsin, other places, actually Arizona, called me and uh, gave them all the details of why. They said, you're right, but we don't have the courage to say this election is wrong. We can't do it. And so they didn't. So all I know is President Trump is innocent. And that's been proven by the courts. Thank you, Matt Gates, for Thank doing you, what you did. Really appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> Love to take some of your questions. Michael? Uh, thanks, Michael. Are you going to be bringing this to the floor? Is it privileged to bring this to the floor to vote? Uh, in its current form, it's not privileged, but I know that our leadership uh, holds the views that undergird what we're pushing. Gates. Mel? I have, and I sat next to him for seven years in the Judiciary Committee, though, so I'm pretty sure it is to where he stands. Have you talked about this with him? I have. And what's, what's his thought? He was thrilled that so many members had signed on. It's really incredible to have 63 original co-sponsors to anything, and President Trump was heartened by as many supporters who, uh, who are backing our legislative endeavor. I think that the House of Representatives has a, a special and unique voice here. I don't believe that the efforts of lawfare by the left and some of these bureaucrats and states have concluded. I think that they will persist and, and may take different form or fashion. And so the fact that the House would stand and say, we uh, assert our sense that this was not an insurrection uh, could have legal significance as well as, as significance for the body. We, we have tried to get those answers. I mean, one of the most searing pieces of evidence we developed was when George Hill, a former FBI official whistleblower, said that he couldn't get information out of the Washington field office regarding cases that they were pushing out to Boston because the Washington field office said they had so many confidential human sources uh, that were in, in the group that they wouldn't share that information. When there were follow-up questions, directed at Christopher Ray, at Lisa Monaco, at Merrick Garland, both in the House and Senate, they got real squirrely as to whether or not those federal assets had increased the level of criminal acuity. So uh, as I think Mr. Uh, Biggs said during his remarks, there were people who were violent at that riot, and they should not have been. But that is a very different thing than declaring that President Trump engaged in an insurrection. He wasn't here. He said he wanted people to be peaceful and patriotic. And like, I never even really, like insurrection isn't a term we interacted with frequently before getting to Congress. Like you never heard about the insurrection on the Little League board or at the local Kiwanis club. But because it has this legal significance, it's been lashed to President Trump unfairly. And that's what we're trying to remediate. Well, I'll give you a follow up. Uh, say, incidentally, there might have been people who had been trailing folks from other states who came here, but that they didn't do anything to Yes, it, it, it came as no surprise to us that the Washington field office didn't confess to their own actions and cover-up. But there is contravening evidence that was presented by whistleblowers saying that what the Washington field office has told you is not true, and they were able to cite specific phone calls, conversations, conference calls, where, where a very different sentiment was expressed. Yes. Now, we know why you don't think he's guilty of an insurrection, but, you know, forgive me if this is a little off, off topic, but is he guilty of adding trillions to the national debt, and how are you going to convey that on the campaign trail? Well, this is a press conference about the, the insurrection measure. I, I would note the fact that during President Trump's time, the economy was growing tremendously. And so we were focused on the growth that must be a feature of our deficit and debt reduction strategies. And now many of the colleagues that are gathered here are working to put downward pressure on spending. And we wish we had a willing partner in the White House and in the Senate to do so. Uh, and that's, that's created some of our challenges in that regard. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I don't know. If they follow the facts and the law, they'd be with us. But, you know, uh, the, the whispers from those ten voices get softer and softer by the day. But two are still are your colleagues. Yeah. That's, I mean, if you bat 200, that it won't get you into a starting lineup, much less the Hall of Fame. Hop. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. One second. I was a Democrat. I was the one that voted. Yeah, exactly. 
And that's one of the reasons, one of many, that I change parties. Hoffman, do you see yourself uh, questioning the DOJ or pressuring them to ask them if they're going to do anything about, or if they have an investigation going on regarding the, the pipe bomber for that day? Yeah, we have we have been in a number of conversations with Capitol Police and with the DOJ regarding the pipe bomber. Uh, we just learned last week that the Capitol Police uh, fessed up to the fact that it was a plainclothes Capitol Police officer who found the pipe bomb. Uh, as uh, Mr. Crane indicated, Thomas Massey has built the video evidence around that, and it seemed to be sort of odd that people were eating sandwiches and watching children walk by, and the vice president was just steps away, uh, and that there didn't seem to be the type of, of concern and response that you would have if there really was a fear that there might be an explosion there. So yeah, w there, there's still a mystery there with the pipe bomber, uh, but certainly uh, we've seen in pleadings the government use the pipe bomb as a mechanism to try to enhance punishment and sentencing for people. Mm -hmm. If in fact it was a, a bit of a ruse, that would have been unfair. I'll give you a follow up if you. Yeah, yeah I would, this is off topic, uh, kind of. But considering you guys already nuked the media up here, uh, did you want to add to what uh, Congressman Green, Congressman Boebert has said about the media? I, I, I never try to perfect on the, on the sentiment of Ms. Green and Ms. Boebert. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, there was a conversation last year, I think, in the middle of the year about potentially expunging some of the teachers. There were two of those resolutions. Why go ahead with this resolution rather than one of the expungement resolutions? Uh, Speaking to insurrection specifically has greater legal utility than the expungement of an impeachment because you have these unelected bureaucrats who are trying to use the term insurrection uh, in a very tortured and undemocratic way. The, the expungement of the impeachments is something certainly I would support, but that has a different legal effect. Mel? Uh, what is, is there like a practical sort of implication if this passes? Would this help Trump legally in court or just as a symbol? No, I, I think that it would be incredibly helpful legally if we were to adopt this provision. You know, I, I've been the victim of federal crimes. I know what it's like when prosecutors regularly consult the victim to understand what the victim's expectations are. If we're the purported victim in Congress and we're saying this was not an insurrection, I think that would hold a great deal of weight. Yes? Congressman, do you think uh, or are you hoping that the Supreme Court will weigh in in this resolution if it comes to a vote? And then secondly, isn't this resolution also a way of uh, testing the loyalty of House Republicans or their support towards Donald Trump if it comes to a vote? Uh, the answer to your first question is I don't know that the Supreme Court has a mechanism by which to address a sense of Congress resolution. I think there are a number of legal matters that are working their way to the court, and, and our expectation is that the court will not embrace the anti-democratic impulses that we've seen elsewhere. Uh, and whether or not this is a loyalty test to President Trump, I'll leave that to the members and President Trump to determine. I think if this lasts too much longer, this meeting will become an insurrection, but I'll give you the last question. Sure. This is a non-binding resolution, though, so if you were worried about the legality, why not the, you know, Article 14 does provide a way for Congress to make sure Trump is on their ballot, which is through two thirds vote. Why not pursue that? The best is yet to come. Thank you all so much.